Yeah, I just have to duck for the... You ready? My life journey started in the city of Calcutta, in the nation of India. <laughs> Thought my calling would be in business. So I ended up with a, a bachelor's in business, uh, an MBA in business. I meet this young girl, fall in love, get married in January of 2000. And in February of 2001, I pack up my bags, I leave Calcutta, India for a new life in America. I left home with two suitcases and $50 in my wallet. Land in New York City on a cold day. In a few weeks of getting to America, I find work on the 81st floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. My wife, Mary, she finds work on the 71st floor of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Everything was now going so well for us. <laughs> and here rolled in September 2001. This is an exciting month. My wife is now, what, four months pregnant with our first child. But I happened to also pick up this book called The Prayer of Jabez, that first week of September. And that book really got me thinking. And I started asking these questions. God, what is my purpose of having moved to America? Is it all about the success and fame that I can find in this country? Or is there something more? It is the most beautiful, clear day on the East Coast. I'm on the 81st floor of the North Tower. I sent out an email to someone that would go to my church saying, Something's happening to me this morning. I know there's a call of God upon my life. I've just been chasing stuff in America. I want to be used of God. It's 8 or 5 in the morning, and I hit the send button on my email. I'm standing by this fax machine, trying to send some documents out to our office in Philadelphia, when I hear this incredible explosion. crashing into our tower. What followed was the buildings are shaking violently. Walls begin to cave down. I started seeing things fall all around us. Jet fuel by then had made its way down onto our floor. Fire breaks out all around us. So we start fighting our way through the fire, make our way onto that stairwell. Thousands of people now joining us onto that stairwell the fear of death written on the face of everyone. We hear an explosion. This is the second plane crashing into the second tower. I'm trying to reach my wife. I'm trying to reach her through my cell phone. I borrow the phones of all the people that are with me, but cell phones just wouldn't work. And I'm saying, God, if this building is gonna go down with us, I'm never gonna see my wife again. I'm never gonna see the child she's carrying. I get to this level, which is called the plaza. But now this place of life, this place of just exuberance, where life would be celebrated, has now been turned into a place of death, a place of destruction, as I see hundreds of bodies of people that jumped out of the buildings, people who were in those planes. I start walking towards the South Tower. I had no idea about what was about to happen. 15, 20 feet away from this building, when I suddenly realized that the ground that I'm standing on, the ground around me is shaking. I felt like I was being sucked into some kind of vacuum that was being created around me. I hear another incredible roar. Thought it was a bomb, but this is not a bomb. The building I approached, the South Tower, was finally imploding and going down. When I was about nine years of age, I watched my only sister die to leukemia, and it did not make sense to me. If there is a loving God, if there is a God who is interested and involved in the affairs of men, then why is there death? Why is there suffering? I looked around, and there's 15 or 20 people around me, and by then we had huddled together. 
And now this thought comes to my mind. These people that are with you, where are they going without Jesus? And till that moment in my life, uh, I was a closet Christian. I would never be very vocal or verbal about my faith. But facing death, I feel this boldness to speak up for Jesus. And I started crying out Jesus, and I asked those 15, 20 people to call upon the name of the Lord. The most incredible thing happens. No, not one try to argue with me or debate with me. But as I started calling upon the name of the Lord, they followed in unison. And I could hear these people cry Jesus with me for a few minutes. After about 20 minutes, I'm surprised that I'm still alive. I'm plastered with soot and glass. I could not breathe. The soot and the ash was getting into my lungs. I decided to crawl, feel my way back to that place where I had prayed with those people to only realize that these people who had just prayed with me, they did not make it out alive. Their bodies were smashed and crushed. I said, God, they just call upon your name and how come they not make it? But I felt the Lord saying, Sujo, they made their peace with me in their dying moments and they're resting with me in my presence. And now something amazing happens. A red light begins to flash to the soot and to the smoke. The light now leads us out of the pit and I'm trying to run out of ground zero. When suddenly another roar, I turn back and this is a North Tower collapsing. I'm out of the debris. By now the towers have collapsed. Both of them have collapsed. Dust, smoke, ash, balls of fire rising out of ground zero. And I'm sitting right in the middle of one of the streets of New York City, wondering, God, why did you spare my life? For sure my wife is dead. I had now given up hope about my pregnant wife. I felt impressed I should walk into a store that was right across to me. A young girl from the store comes out, pulls me in. She started removing glass from my hair and she says, let me call your family for you. I told her what I thought had happened to my wife. She takes my cell phone and as she's trying to pull some numbers out of my cell phone, my cell phone rings for the very first time that day in that girl's hand. She has me back the phone. I flip my phone, I see my wife's caller ID and I'm thinking it's someone else calling me with the news that your wife is dead. So I picked up the call with a lot of fear, thinking that would be the worst news of my life. But when I said hello, it's my wife on the other side. Her life was spared. She tells me what happened to her. She wanted to go to work early that day, but that morning she was late to work. And now we meet each other late that day. It was the most amazing moment. From just sheer fear that each of us thought the other was dead, now finally reunited. That night I said, God, I am done chasing the things that's been on my heart. I've been chasing success, fame, financial security. But from now on, I want to be chasing that which is in your heart. And I'm convinced that all that's in your heart is people. People from all over the world. Many of them who have never heard your name even once. So God, I want to be a proclaimer of the good news of Jesus Christ. I want to redeem my time. So God, here's a surrendered life. Would you rewrite the story of my life? My name is Sujo John and I am second.